everyone. Thank you so much for waiting until the end of the day, <laughs> holding on here. I appreciate it very much. Um, I'm sure it's going to be worth it. Uh, my name is Aurora, or Aurora for the non-Spanish speakers here. And I work for Google in trust and safety outreach. What my team does is we talk to the ecosystem about search and how search works and other different things, for example, security online and privacy. So different, different things, but we talk a lot to people like you and we bring information back internally to our teams. So it's really, really important that we're all here today and after this presentation, I will be available downstairs if you have any questions or any feedback for me, more than happy to have a chat. So that's the first part. Um, okay. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to manage your presence online. I am guessing that most of you here have a website or a blog or some sort of presence online and you probably want to make sure, want to kind of know how you can make a little bit more out of it. Um, this is going to be the agenda. So first of all, I start with how search works and then I'll go into a little bit more of the entrails of the of a search result. Um, I'll give you four search engine optimization tips and I'll introduce you into some updates for a search console. Okay, but before we start, it is very, very important that we think about who is our audience and where our audience is. So, some of us might have a website or a blog and that's a great starting point. But if we don't know where those people are and how they're coming to us, where the, their user journey starts, we're going to be a bit lost in this process. So, first of all, are they coming through Google search? Are they coming through social media, Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube? Where are they coming from? And secondly, once we're, we have that clear out and we, we know what, what the user journey looks like, we need to think about the, the ecosystem. We need to think about, about, the, about this holistically. So we need to, the same as when you're opening a business and you need to study the market, the field, we need to do the same online. So we need to know who's there, who are the players already, and what's going to make me unique uh, when, I'm, when I'm getting into this, this new spot. So that's also um, a very important aspect of, of getting online. Um, and also, once we've made it, it's important to keep the content up to date and engage with your users because it's all about the content. And I'm going to repeat this quite a lot today um, because it's, it's, it is true. Um, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about how search works. Uh, for many of us, search is just we go to Google, we type in a question, and we get an answer. But the journey starts way, way before that. So first of all, um, there's the crawling, the crawling part. Think about, think about a spider, a spider building a spider web. Um, Google works, Google crawlers work a little bit like that. Um, Google crawlers go page by page, following different links, and bringing all of that information back to the Google servers. And once we get that information on the Google servers, we have a bunch of information. Great. But imagine yourself in a library trying to find a book and the library is not categorized in any, single, in any way. Um, that would be a challenge, wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> Don't try it, it's impossible. So this is where the Google Index comes into play. Um, Google Index is considered probably the biggest library in the world. It's over one billion gigabyte big. And it basically puts a structure into all of that information that the crawlers have been bringing in. And so now back to you. You're sitting down in your living room and you're looking for something. Um, you hit enter. And do you want a billion of answers? No. no. You probably want something relevant to you at that specific time. And that relevant thing um, is something that Google, Google's ranking algorithms try to figure out for you. So they take into account over 200 different factors. It's not just a few things, it's, it's a lot of things. But for example, they take into account the freshness of the content, or they take into account um, 
how, how many times the search query appears in your page, or how the user experiences, the quality of your page. So there are many more factors playing into, playing into this, but it's, it's um, important that you know that the, that the, the algorithms are, are there to serve you the best possible information at a given time. And as you know, search results take different shapes and forms. Some people here might tonight take a, take a flight to uh, from Boston somewhere. Um, sadly, won't be able to attend the second day of work camp. I will. <laughs> uh, some people might not. So uh, you might be um, going online and searching for a way to get to the airport from here. Now you probably don't want a lot of links telling you different information. You probably just want a map with directions and schedules, and maybe transportation options. Google um, is evolving constantly. As you evolve, as your needs of, of, for results evolve, we're evolving too, trying to mirror those trends. So um, if you need a video, video result for, some, for something, we will provide you with a video result and not just with a list of links. And I'm going to ask you a very candid question, but I just want to just want to see who here has a cell phone. Okay, and who here has checked their cell phone today? Okay, so in average, we check our cell phone around 150 times a day. I'm hoping that this is not happening during my presentation, but I can't control that. Um, so Google is mirroring this trend by moving towards a mobile-first index. And what does a mobile-first index mean? Well, instead of what, what, what was happening before, Google Index was checking the, primarily the desktop, des desktop version of a, of a website, it now checks, or now, or moving forward, if it's something that's rolling slowly, it checks the mobile version of a site. Now, what does that mean to you, if you're a content creator? You have to make sure that your content on mobile is, um, is, is, is pairing, is matching, whatever is happening in desktop. And that sometimes doesn't happen. So to ensure that our, our users are getting the full content, the full picture, make sure that your mobile version, if you do have a separate mobile version, is up to date. Also, speed is very important and uh, very soon speed will be a ranking factor on mobile. So you want to make sure that your, your mobile site is loading properly and loading quickly. Um, you know that when people are, are, on, are on their phones, or when you are on their phones, um, you don't have enough time to, to stop and wait until a site um, loads, or to navigate from site to site if they're slow. No, you just want information, and you want to really, really grab your, your audience quickly. And let's look into the, the entrails of the search result. So, a search result, which is a typical, a typical page result, um, in this case we've looked for, for a bakery, and first of all, to your right hand side, over there, uh, that's a local result, and that's a business. Um, I don't know, if, who's here, who here is a business owner? Okay, so you might have already claimed your, your listing on Google, Google My Business. If you haven't, I really recommend you do this because it's a great way for um, for your customers to find you very very quickly, um, and it's completely free. If you do get someone contacting you telling you that you have to pay for this, it's probably a scam. So don't fall for a scam. Um, it's for free and it's really really useful. Um, secondly, you can find up here the paid result, paid, uh, the paid result. And how do you know that it is a paid result? Well, because it's marked with sponsored and with app here. Um, sometimes it's not very obvious, but <laughs> look for it. It's very, very different. And then uh, we have the organic results, which are the 10 blue links. And it is, again, fundamental, essential to know that there's a separation between those two, the paid results and the organic results. There's no way that organic results um, accept any sort of payment. So 
again, if, if, an, if an agency tells you that you can, you can get, you can rank better by um, paying something, it's not going to be true. They're completely algorithmic, they're organic, they depend on the ecosystem. And digging even further into one of those organic results, um, let's, let's talk about these, uh, these terms, because at some point you might need to debug your sites and these terms can come in very handy. So first of all, the title, so how your, your site is called. Um, secondly, the snippet. So that is the description meta tag. So if you go into the HTML code of your, of your site, um, that's where you introduce um, what your company is about or whatever you want to tell your user, really. Um, and then we have the site links, which are navigation links that help your user get uh, to a certain part of your site um, in a quicker way without necessarily going through the home page. Now these are also algorithmic and they don't always appear, but when they do, they really help the users. And now that we know how search works, how um, the anatomy of the search result works, um, let me give you four search engine optimization tips. First of all, um, performing a site search. What is a site search? Well, um, a site search is actually is a peace of mind many times. And it's just a, kind of a, a sense check to know how your site is being indexed, if at all. So if you want to know if you're in Google, basically, that's the question, am I in Google? You can, you can easily go to google.com and then use the site colon operator and a URL, your, your, your URL, um, with no spaces, and then you'll see if you're being indexed, and if you are, what pages are being indexed, which is very interesting to know because you might find that there's, that there's pages in your site that are not being indexed at all. So it's a great starting point to troubleshoot um, potential issues with your site. Also, it's great to find out um, how Google is indexing your site um, in order to find, well, maybe, maybe that's not the title I wanted to use, or maybe that's not the description of the snippet I want my users to know me for. So then it's a great way for you to then go back to your code and change things, code or to your theme on WordPress. Um, tip number two, uh, create a descriptive um, about us page. Now, this is really, really important because you want to you want your users and the, the search engine to understand you, to know who you are. So it's it's great if you, if you can give them as much information in a very easy way. So for example, if you're a business, you want to make sure that the user doesn't have to dig in to understand what are your open hour, opening hours, um, where are you located, what's your contact information. You want to give them that very easily, straight away. Um, actually, 96% of, of people who, who go into stores, into businesses, have previously checked the opening hours or on, on the information online. So you want to be there. You really want to be there and get your customers online. Um, also, and this is something that people forget about many times, um, editorial. Now, we don't give importance or some people don't give importance to grammar mistakes or uh, spelling mistakes. This is our business card. This is our resume to the world, to our customers. If we have any of these issues, we won't be seen as, as well or perceived as well by potential customers or users or readers. You know. um, and also, one thing I do recommend is to run, uh, to go into Google Trends I don't know if uh, this is something that you've used, but it's a really cool tool. Um, and in Google Trends, you can find how users are looking for stuff. So, for example, if you have a company that's selling car parts, you might want to run a comparison between how people talk about car parts versus automobile parts. And then you'll know whether you have to actually talk about automobile or not, or just focus on the word car. So. That's just a little example, but Google Trends can be a really, really useful tool there. Thirdly, security. Now, 
many times people don't focus on security and it's a major, major aspect of, um, of managing a website, a blog, um, your presence online. And people don't focus on this until something hits the fan and then, and then they've been hacked and it's too late and recovery can be expensive, can be long, can be traumatic. So don't let that happen to you. Put in place these steps. First of all, uh, don't just use a password, but add an extra layer, add an extra layer of protection, which is the two, the, the two, um, the two factor authentication, the two step verification. Um, this will make it more, this will make it harder for anybody to get into your, into, into your credentials. So protect yourself. Uh, keep your systems up to date. Treat this update. I know, I know that I know that we all procrastinate, and when we get those those um, those notifications of you have to up up upgrade your system, we always say, "Yeah, remind me later. Remind me later." Yeah, yeah, we all do it. <laughs> I do it too. I shouldn't. I don't. I don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, these uh, system upgrades are almost like an antivirus. They're very, very important because they might be fixing potential security breaches of previous versions. So if you don't install them, you might be making it really easy for the hackers out there. And there's many hackers out there saying, yay, look at this person. So keep your system up to date. Uh, implement HTTPS. Encrypt your information, um, especially if you're asking your users to share um, important data with you, sensitive data, make sure that no one else can access that information. Because if they will, they'll be in trouble and your brand will also be in trouble. You'll also suffer. So make sure that you're not making it easy for anyone to breach your information. Um, verify your site in Search Console. I'm going, I've been talking here and there about Search Console during this talk and I'll mention a bit more later. But Search Console is a great tool uh, for to message with Google. So for example, if there's, if there's an, a problem with your website, as in you've been hacked, or you've been injected spam, anything can happen, um, Google will notify you in Search Console, and they'll tell you, hey, this is going on, and this is how to, how to fix it. So I can only recommend it enough. I, I just shoot. <laughs> um, it's for free as well. Um, have a backup. So you never know what can happen to a website. Um, just be ready to have it both online and offline. Um, and offer training to your employees. If you do have employees, make sure that everyone is on the same page. Make sure that um, everyone knows how to implement all of these other, other steps in order to keep your company safe from whatever can happen out there. And finally, my last tip for today is uh, to follow the Webmaster Guidelines. Um, these are uh, an overview of um, different ways in which you can create sites that have good quality for your users, that have good content, and that, uh, and that essentially do well because they are they're playing in fair, fair terms. Unfortunately, there's a lot of users out there who don't have that mentality, who don't follow the Webmaster Guidelines, and who add spammy uh, features into their websites. They can be hiding content from users um, in order to rank higher. You probably have heard about all of these um, measures before. Don't fall for them. Um, we will catch you. <laughs> also, um, if you are not going to be developing your website, it's, it's very important that you know about the guidelines so that you can ask the person who's developing your website um, to implement them and to ensure that they're, you know, on the same page. And I was mentioning that I was going to give you some updates about Search Console. Uh, first of all, who here uses Search Console? Because, oh, okay, okay, around half half of the room. That's okay. Um, so, Search Console for whoever hasn't heard about about it yet. Um, it's, um, it's a great tool, uh, it's a dashboard that gives you all of the information um, about your site's activity. So 
you will have information about the traffic that comes in and out of your page, of your site, um, where the traffic is coming from, whether there are any issues with, with the indexing or the crawling, um, whether, whether you have any security breaches, whether you've been attacked by a hacker. So all of those things can be accessed through Search Console. And um, also uh, like a, a major thing that happened in Search Console this year is that it went through a major uh, facelift and it's now, uh, there, there's, there's now a beautiful tool out there that's mobile friendly. Yes, finally, it's mobile friendly. Um, and it's, it's updated a lot of its features and it's added new ones. So it's currently on the beta, so I don't know who's using the beta already? Hey, okay, so some people here in the room will definitely know what I'm talking about. Others might need to wait a little bit longer. Um, but it's definitely worth knowing what, what's coming. So, Search Console um, this year has, uh, this year and actually this month, has launched the UR URL inspection tool. And what is this? Well, by introducing a URL to this tool, Google tells you exactly how it's reading that URL in terms of crawling, in terms of indexing. Um, if everything is okay, it tells you about the enhancements, so if you're using AMP, or if you're, if you're maybe implementing um, structured data in order to appear in rich cards, um, like for example job postings, or recipes, or reviews, it tells you how that is doing too. And if there are any problems, they're going to tell you what problems they're seeing, and how to fix them. So it's a fantastic tool that offers transparency to you and full control of your, of your site. And secondly, uh, there's a very improved performance report. So all of these new features and all of these um, improved features are all coming because of user feedback. So if you do get to use these features, there's a, there's a feedback um, tool where you can offer your feedback straight to that team, the Search Console team, who's super happy to receive all of these comments because they're, they're building this essentially for you, for the users. Um, if you have a, if you're a WordPress, it's very easy to get your 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 site verified with with Search, Search Console. Um, I can show you afterwards on the laptop how to do it, and um, it's yeah, it's it's no 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 big deal. About the search, the about the performance report, um, we we heard you loud and clear, and now we're offering offering 16 months of data. What does that mean? It means that you can compare year by year. How your site did, and make informed decisions on uh, future strategic decisions. Or you can also see where the traffic is coming from, if maybe it's coming from mobile, and oh, you were not focusing on mobile, so maybe you actually have to, because all of your users are coming from there. So it's, it's a place where a lot of information is gathered, and not only that, but now um, there's um, information about errors. So if there's any error, for example, in crawling, there's a, a page that's not being crawled, or you will get uh, an error on the exact links that are being affected by this error. And, and this is a favorite of mine because I like sharing these things, um, you can share these errors with people who are not even on Search Console. So sharing is caring. Share your issues with other people. Um, you can you can go and you can get involved. Um, developers, you can get a lot of people involved um, in your company. In Unit. It's it's a very useful tool. And um, finally, you might have heard about this one. It's a mobile friendly test. Since we're all very focused in mobile, it's a great way of knowing how Google is seeing your site on a mobile device. So it gives a lot of, um, it, it gives you a score, it gives your site a score in terms of usability. So, I don't know, maybe your, your writing is too small, or maybe your buttons are not placed properly. So it gives you a score, and, um, and it also talks about, it also gives you a score in terms of speed. So how long it takes for your site to, to load. So that's all from me. These are, these are some of the resources that I talked about today. You can take a picture to, um, to take this home if you want. 
um, and others that I didn't mention. For example, there's the SEO Starter Guide, which is a very thorough guide on different um, different tools and different things you can do when you're when you're starting in, in SEO. Um, and yeah, you can also check us in, in YouTube. Where on YouTube we have regular office hours. Uh, where we answer questions, there's the forums that I, I, I manage, um, the English forum. There's a lot of different resources that you can definitely use, and they're all public and you can share them with your, your colleagues, your friends. And yeah, I can, I don't know how we're doing with time. Uh, got 14 minutes. Okay, so I can take questions here, and if we don't have enough time, we can go downstairs and continue. Yeah. Um, how do you know we do this? Do, want to, do they walk to the mic? Or do so, yes. Yeah, okay. So if you can walk to the mic. <coughs> Curious about the Google My Business, the one on the, on the right. Does that need a street address? Because like, if you work from home, I'm curious about that. Um, I don't think that is, um, I don't, so the question was about Google My Business, whether there's a need for, uh, for a physical address. I don't believe there's a need for a physical address in, in Google My Business. So, yeah, there's a lot of people who work, work remotely nowadays, so... Yeah, so if, if you have a question, what you can do is you can just stand up and queue up at the, at the microphone so that everyone can hear your question. I'm just, I'm curious, you didn't talk about Google Analytics, was that for any particular reason, or you just wanted to focus on Google Console, which I think is awesome, by the way. But I'm just curious if um, not talking about it, you should really need to get into that. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, she asked about uh, Google Analytics and whether I didn't mention anything on purpose. Um, I personally, I don't work um, in the Google Analytics team. Um, I know that they're doing great, great stuff in there and great integrations with, with WordPress. Um, Google Analytics can be accessed on Search Console as well. So I didn't mention it not for any particular reason, but just because it's something you can you can access through Search Console as well. I have a question about the site pages. How do you get your site pages to come up as well? If there's certain things that can be built in the pages so that the user gets more than just the one result that that those listings of the site pages come come up as well under their um, search results. When you say you say site site pages, so you want to index under the search. The yeah. links. The links uh, like, like about us and contact search. us. Yeah. Okay, um, I I will need. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of things. I have a slide of it. about what can you do in order to appear in site links. Um, so as I was mentioning before, um, site links are completely algorithmic and sometimes Google picks on them and sometimes it, they, sometimes Google doesn't. So unfortunately there's nothing more I can I can add here because it's something that we can't really control. But um, sometimes they do appear and they're really useful. So one thing that I will recommend if you you're managing your website is to ensure that the sections are very clearly marked and that Google identifies that these sections exist in, order, in case you are um, you are a candidate for sightings um, Google will know exactly what are the relevant um, the relevant sections to highlight so does it also the, the cure the word the, the, the search terms play into it as well because they're not going to serve it up right if it doesn't not asking about um, a particular thing, right? If the, if the search is for one thing and the, the user doesn't need all that other information, is that like, do you think that's part of the algorithm? So, usually it depends on, on what users are looking for. Um, if, for example, you have a business <coughs> for opening hours, uh, this might be something that appears in, in the navigation um, as, a, as a help for, for users to find you easily. Um, but I'm afraid that's that's all I can say. Yeah. All right, thank you. Of course. Have you tried them? 
Do you have a question? Well, I was going to ask for, have you tried the Yoast plugin in WordPress for the Search Console? No. It's very good. And it helps you to really show on your website um, the, the keywords, the description, the right thing. And there is another uh, <coughs> add-on to that plugin for the analytics that you can see all the analytics, realistic, daily, on your dashboard. Very good. Very good one. Thank you. That's a great tip. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm pretty much a content generator, and my um, web team, when I'm trying to put stuff in a post, a bunch of stuff on WordPress that goes below it. And some of it's like alt text and other kinds of like sort of metadata. And they say, oh, you don't have to put anything in there. We haven't been putting anything in there. And I think that he's <laughs> completely wrong. And I'm wondering if um, either you or someone else in the group has a sense of which of these kind of like below the fold um, fields are essential to populate in WordPress. I would have to have a look at, at your specific case okay. um, to know what theme you're using or what, ty what type of content you're creating. Um, I can't say it without that seeing this. And that's YOS or YOS? For all in one SEO or YOS. YOS. Thank you. I have a quick question. Can you go to the microphone, please? <laughs> The organizers are always the worst. <laughs> That's right. So my question is, you have a search term that is pretty big, but it's a new product. Nobody really knows. It shares the same terms as another product, indicating the color of the product. But what the new product does is not what you think it does. Is there a way to submit something that does something different than what Google may know? It has. I am going to need you to ask that question again. <laughs> okay, basically, you have a product that is a product and a color, and you have the same name, but means something different because it does something different. How do you submit something to Google to say, okay, well, that's quite not what people are searching for, but it's not the right term. You know what I'm saying? All right, so I'll tell you. So if, if you Google search aqua balloons, what's going to pop up is an aqua colored balloon. But there's a balloon in Japan that's being made called an aqua balloon. And it actually, you put water in it, and it heat seal it, and it, heat, it blows back up. So how do you make a correction to something that make it bigger search terms? Is it an SEO, or is it, can you submit it to Google that it's a different product than... So, okay, several things here. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, you're fine. Um, it always depends on the context. I was mentioning before, when I was talking about um, ranking, um, how Google will, how the algorithms will, will read into who you are and where you are, and will try to interpret what type of aqua balloons you're actually looking for. So, maybe you're in Japan, and maybe I'm going to serve you that brand, because I, I find it relevant, but maybe you're over here, over here in Boston, and that's not what, that doesn't really make much sense. So there's, there's a few, there's different factors that will contribute to making that, that call in terms of, of the ranking. Um, you can always, I, what, I, what I find that's very, very important is that you describe whatever your, your, you, you mean, um, for, for the search engine to understand as much as you can in your content. So make your descriptions really understandable, not just for your users, but for Google to know whether you're talking about Apple Balloons the brand or Apple Balloons X. Correct. And the second part to that is what dictates a foreign country's listing coming up on a US Google site basically search? So if you got something from Japan mm -hmm. and it's in the U.S. when you Google in the U.S., what's bringing that data from Japan to the U.S.? That's a great question. <laughs> um, 
Google searches are, I mean, Google is not just a local. Right. Sorry? Universal. It's universal. universal. Exactly. So this is, this is why somebody, you're welcome, somebody in, I don't know, in India can access information from Brazil. So that's, that's the beauty of it. If we, we put fences into it, then we would be cutting that access to information that we have. Doesn't the search results depend on the device you're looking on, like mobile? Yeah. Um, how much time do we have? How important is a site XML file? Site map. Site map. Site map. Oh, site map. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's an important thing. It's, it's the structure of your, of your site. So very important for Google search results? Uh, I think it's very important for, for you. <laughs> Not just for, I think for, for your website to, to have a, a search, uh, a site map. It's not. It's not fully necessary. So that that depends on your on your own. That depends on your own objective. Hi. Uh, so I was just curious if you had any opinions about AMP, uh, the Accelerator in Mobile Pages project, and any implications on SEO. Um, you have to be a little bit more specific in your question. So you have the accelerated mobile mm -hmm. pages, right? So does it make sense for, let's say, a small-time blogger or an independent, you know, person who's just putting out content to really implement AMP pages for their blog or website? AMP has a lot of uh, benefits. So in, in, in every single... It, it, uh, yes, it, it has benefits on desktop, on mobile especially, it's very, very um, quick sites, they load really quickly, they're very good quality. So AMP is something that we in Google, we recommend um, um, site owners and these content creators to adopt. But this again, your, your website will be completely fine if you don't have an AMP version to it. So this is, again, um, a lot of my answers are going to be, it depends on your own business model or your own objective. Um, there's no right and wrong answer. Totally understand Google is complex. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my question relates to Yoast again, because a lot of people I think use Yoast as, uh, as a plugin. And I, my assumption is that Yoast is, talk, is speaking to about Google search, but they're very specific about, like, if you have a a meta description, and then they and then you know they use these and turn them off, but they use you know your red light or green light or whatever, and they say this meta description that these words have, are not reflected in the first paragraph of that page, for example. So how specific is how accurate is that? Do you really need to be exact with that, or is that just Yoast's interpretation of Google search? You know how you know how how much do you need to follow this plugin's parameters and what were they using? Were they using Google to, to, to create those parameters? So, first of all, I don't work for Yoast, so that's something probably you want to ask them. Um, for me, what, what what resonates with me is if you want to use a certain type of description because it makes sense again to, to the content you want to put out there, um, use it. Go ahead and, 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 you, and go to Google Trends and see how your users might be finding your content or are talking about similar content and maybe that, is, that gives you a good hint about what to write in your description. Um, apart from that, I don't quite know about jokes. So. I'm only asking because the question is whether your meta descriptions, for example, your keywords, need to be directly reflected yes. in what you have in your yes. content. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. They absolutely yes. have to have exactly, yes. like, pretty much exactly. Actually, if you have that in your header, it will pull up immediately. 10% before any other website that doesn't have them as a keyword, description, and heading. That will bust you up without paying anything. Yes. So it's very effective. So what, what you were asking um, as well, is whether the description has to have anything related to the content on your page. Well, this, the question, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, 
Thank you everyone for listening and for holding on. 